found the first fossil? That is an interesting question. And it's one that's honestly impossible to truly answer. Humans have been finding fossils since humans first existed, honestly. We stumble across them all the time. A lot of fossils, even today, are found accidentally. So it's quite easy to understand that, historically speaking, we as a species have always done it that way. From the get-go, we just find these things, and we don't always write it down. So in terms of who found the first one, ever, we just don't know. But we do have some records of the earliest fossil discoveries, the development of paleontology, as well as who first scientifically analyzed a dinosaur bone. So, let's start there. The earliest conclusive records we have of the discovery of fossils date back to between 570 and 480 BC with Xenophanes, who was a Greek philosopher, theologian, poet, he and other Greek individuals all wrote about fossils of marine organisms, which while they may not have recognized how old these truly were, they did recognize that the land that they were standing on must have been once underwater, which would have been a significant level of insight to have in those days when full scientific understanding was centuries off. The ancient Chinese also wrote about the discovery of bones, and specifically dinosaur bones, but they documented them as dragon bones. Because, well, a lot of cultures probably did that too. That's why the dragon mythos is so prevalent across the entire world. Because dinosaurs were, ancient cultures would find these bones and assume that they were recent remains, and therefore dragons. Much later, however, during the 15th century, Leonardo da Vinci, of all people, would write about fossils in an unpublished notebook. He did conclude that much of the remains that were found were the remains of shellfish, which does suggest significant insight on his part, but these remains, it's important to recognize, closely resembled modern species, so they were pretty easy for him to recognize. But to da Vinci's further credit, he did resist some of the, frankly, wrong understanding of what these fossils were at the time. In those days, a lot of people felt that these fossils weren't actually remains at all. They were simply inorganic matter that just happened to resemble living organisms. And da Vinci did not agree with that in any way. He pointed out that some of the remains he was looking at contained traces of the movements of the animals, which would be impossible if these were just coincidental rocks that just happened to resemble living organisms. Even before da Vinci, there was the Persian naturalist, Ibn Sina, who was known as Evacina in Europe. In 1027, he proposed an explanation of how the stoniness of fossils was caused in his book, The Book of Healing. He actually modified an idea that was sourced at Aristotle, which explained it in terms of vaporous exhalations. Sina modified it into the theory of petrifying fluids that basically, well, petrified these remains and preserved them. It isn't quite right, but he was a lot closer to the truth than a lot of people would have been. Over in China, Shen Kao used marine fossils that were found in the Taihang Mountains to suggest the existence of geological processes like geomorphology and the shifting of seashores over time. This was all the way back in 1088. He found petrified bamboo, and because of this, he argued for a theory of gradual climate change in the area, since the area where he found this bamboo, which is the Shaanxi province, was part of a dry climate zone that didn't support a habitat that could grow bamboo at that time, meaning at some point in the region's history, it could. Again, this shows remarkable insight in terms of how important fossils are when it comes to understanding the history of our world. But it still would be quite a few centuries, even after da Vinci, and so people were starting to recognize that these were actually remains and not just coincidental statues naturally formed that just happened to look like living things. It wasn't until the 17th century that individuals in Europe started taking a really hard look at these fossils and realizing that they were, in fact, preserved remains, and very old ones at that. 
and in terms of specifically dinosaur bones, that would lead us to Robert Plot. He was an English naturalist, and the first professor of chemistry at the University of Oxford, as well as the first keeper of the Ashmolean Museum. He was born in Borden, Kent, and educated at the Y Free School. He entered Magdalen Hall, Oxford, in 1658, where he graduated with a BA in 1661 and an MA in 1664. He was a curious individual and very interested in the study of natural history. Over the course of his investigations, he began collecting artifacts throughout the nearby countryside and published his findings in a book called The Natural History of Oxfordshire. In that book, he described and illustrated various rocks, minerals, and fossils, and that included a dinosaur bone. But he did not recognize it as a dinosaur bone. The term dinosaur didn't even exist at the time. He, like many of his time, was very religious, and in his analysis of the bone, he actually attributed it to a giant human. And he personally still believed that most fossils weren't even the remains of living organisms, that these were just rocks or crystallizations that happened to resemble organic forms without actually being so. Still, he was the first known illustrator of a dinosaur bone, even if he didn't really know what it was exactly. And later that would result in the first true identification of a dinosaur over a century later. William Buckland was an English theologian who became the Dean of Westminster. He was a geologist and a paleontologist. The understanding of fossils had advanced quite a bit in the last years since Plot's time. And Buckland was surprisingly forward-thinking. He started rejecting the literal interpretation of the Bible, and he actually developed a new hypothesis that the word beginning in the book of Genesis actually meant an undefined period between the origin of the Earth itself and the creation of its current inhabitants, during which a long series of extinctions and successive creations of new kinds of plants and animals had occurred. This is much more in line with the modern understanding of the Earth in that it's way, way older than previously thought. His concept was rooted in the idea of catastrophism, which is a geological theory that the Earth has been largely shaped by sudden, very short-lived, violent events, possibly worldwide in scope. It contrasts very much with the idea of uniformitarianism, which is the assumption that the same natural laws and processes that operate in our present day have always operated in the universe in the past, and apply everywhere, and the Earth is shaped by very slow, gradual changes, not sudden shakeups. Weirdly, modern science shows that they're kind of both right, in a way. Like, yes, the Earth does slowly change over time, but it also has been shaped by sudden, catastrophic, horrific things. So, yeah, it's one of those things. Anyway, you want to know about the fossil, though. So, in 1824, he became the president of the Geological Society of London, and it was there that he announced the discovery, at Stonesfield, of fossil bones of a giant reptile which he would name Megalosaurus, meaning Great Lizard. And he wrote the first full account of what would later be called a dinosaur. Plot had again illustrated it first and gave his own interpretation, but Buckland had a much better understanding of the way the Earth actually functioned, and he recognized it for what it was, an unknown animal. He, of course, called it a giant reptile, which is still not quite right, but it's a lot closer than where we were at. And the rest is, well, history. The entire story development of paleontology as a field is a long, long, long tale that encompasses many, 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 many different individuals, but I just gave you a brief overview, basically, to answer the question. Who found the first fossil? We don't know. But these are a bunch of people that gave significant contributions to the field of paleontology. So, hopefully that's good enough of an answer.